So you're stuck with a stock cooler and you only have 20 bucks for an upgrade? I have the answer for you. Howdy howdy guys, Ponchato here, and today we'll be checking out the Arctic Freezer 7X, and I'll be pitting it against two of AMD's stock coolers, the Wraith Stealth and the Wraith Spire, to see how it compares. It may be the most cost-effective cooler I've ever reviewed, and it's one of the easiest to install. Thanks to Arctic for sending it out for review, and let's get started. The Freezer 7X is a compact tower cooler that was just released, and it comes in at under $20. It's actually the successor to the Freezer 7 Pro, one of the most popular budget coolers on the market, which Arctic first released way back in 2005. The Freezer 7X is compatible with AM4, LGA 1151, and LGA 1200. This is actually the first cooler that I've reviewed that specifically mentions LGA 1200, which is Intel's next mainstream CPU socket. The cooler mounting holes are still gonna be the same as LGA 1151 anyway, but it's an interesting note regardless. It has very compact dimensions of 130 33 millimeters tall, 111 wide, and only 74 deep. That gives it wide compatibility with almost any micro ATX or larger case, and it has great clearance. The RAM slots are not covered at all, and the first PCIe slot is given ample room. Compared to the Freezer 7 Pro, the 7X has an improved heatsink design and offset heat pipe layout for better thermal dissipation. It only has two direct contact heat pipes, but as we'll see, it still has very strong performance. The fan and shroud are all one piece, and the cover top gives it a nicer look than most budget coolers, which usually just have an exposed aluminum fin stack. Now, here's something interesting. Arctic claims the 7X's fan motor has an improved coil design that runs 20 degrees Celsius lower than conventional motors, increasing the lifespan. I actually wasn't aware that coil temperature was a major design consideration for computer fans, but it's not just talk. The Freezer 7X comes with a six-year warranty, which is much longer than most other fans and coolers. As for the standard specs, the fan is 92 millimeters. It runs from 300 to 2000 RPM and has a fluid dynamic bearing. The motor also has a variety of improvements over the Freezer 7 Pros, which includes a pretty big efficiency gain. The Freezer 7 Pro consumed 0.25 amps, whereas the 7X only consumes 0.07. That's 72% less power. Fans don't use that much power to begin with, but it's still a pretty substantial increase in efficiency. Fittingly for a budget cooler, installation is extremely simple. Actually, because it can use the stock mounting system on AM4 or Intel's push pin system, you could readily install the Freezer 7X without needing to remove your motherboard at all. And with pre-applied Arctic MX2 thermal paste, the install is about as simple as possible. The process on AM4 is as follows. You place the cooler on the CPU, lining up the tabs and hooking onto the mounting brackets, then tighten down the screws fully. The last step is plugging in the fan. That's actually it. You don't even need to remove the fan to install the 7X. Installation on Intel sockets just involves putting an included mounting bracket onto the motherboard mounting holes, then pushing pins in to lock it in place. Very similar to the Intel stock cooler. That mounting bracket has hooks just like the stock AM4 mounting brackets, so the process is the same for both AMD and Intel once that bracket is in place. The Freezer 7X also has a highly flexible airflow direction. It can be mounted in any direction on LG 1151 front intake, back intake, top or bottom exhaust. On AM4, it's less flexible, but it can still be mounted facing toward the front or toward the back of the motherboard. Now for quick specs on the Stealth and the Spire, these are the coolers that AMD includes with most of their low to mid-range CPUs. The Wraith Stealth is very tiny, only 50 millimeters tall, while the Spire is slightly taller at 69 millimeters. RAM clearance is a bit more complicated with these. On my test setup, which uses a mini ITX motherboard, the VRM heatsink is actually too tall to have the Stealth mounted properly, so you have to mount it with the AMD logo, this little bump part, facing toward the front, which blocks the first RAM slot. On most other motherboards, certainly any size above Mini ITX, this won't happen. Now on the other hand, the larger Wraith Spire slightly overhangs the first RAM slot, so the RAM height is limited to about 48 millimeters. You could probably jam something taller in, but I probably wouldn't. Anyway, the point is the Freezer 7X has much better RAM clearance than the Wraith Stealth or the Wraith Spire because the 7X doesn't even get close to the slots to begin with. As for the fans on the stock coolers, both are 92 millimeters, both have a minimum RPM of 600. The Stealth tops out at 2000 RPM, same as the Freezer 7X, and the Spire tops out at 2500. So there are the contestants, now let's look at the benchmarks. For benchmarks, I actually had to use my Ryzen 3 1200 test setup since the AMD Wraith Spire and Stealth 
Couldn't handle my usual setup with the Ryzen 7 1700. First up, idle temperatures at minimum RPM. Because the 7X can run at a very slow and therefore very quiet 300 RPM, its idle temperature falls behind the Wraith Spire and the Wraith Stealth, both of which have a minimum speed of 600 RPM. Of course, if idle temperatures are a concern for you, you can just run the 7X a little bit faster. Next, here are the idle noise levels. Here's where that 300 RPM minimum comes in handy. The Wraith Stealth and Spire are both high quality by stock cooler standards, but at just over 31 decibels, they are audible. That's still very quiet, but they just can't match the Freezer 7X, which falls below ambient noise levels. It is effectively silent at its minimum RPM. Can't do that with stock cooling. Now the big important graph, load temperatures at max RPM. Despite having the same size fan, same or similar RPM, and only two heat pipes, the Freezer 7X handily demolishes both stock coolers. At under 42 degrees above ambient, the 7X comes out 10 degrees ahead of the Wraith Spire and 20 degrees ahead of the Stealth. In terms of absolute temperature rather than temperature delta, the 7X kept my Ryzen 3 1200 at only 66 degrees Celsius. The Spire hit 76, and the Stealth landed near the thermal shutoff limit at 86. But that's not the whole performance story, as we'll see in the normalized temperature graph in a bit. Before we get to that, here are the load noise levels at maximum RPM. The Freezer 7X lands in the middle of the Stealth and Spire at 46.5 decibels. You might be wondering how the Stealth could be four decibels quiet even though it has the same size fan and runs at the same RPM. I think the most likely explanation is the fact that the 7X has more airflow since it's an upright tower cooler rather than a short downflow cooler. More airflow means more turbulence, more turbulence means more noise. But if anyone has a better explanation, do leave a comment. Okay, now my favorite graph, load temperature normalized to 40 decibels. In other words, at the same noise level, how well does each cooler cool? Here, the Freezer 7X's lead grows even larger. At 44.5 degrees Celsius, it's more than 12 degrees cooler than the Spire and almost 21 degrees cooler than the Stealth. That is a significant step up over both of these stock coolers. I was honestly very surprised at how well the Freezer 7X performed. Given its small dimensions, 92 millimeter fan, and only having two heat pipes, I wasn't expecting it to blow out both stock coolers by this much. But just to be clear, I do like AMD stock coolers. They are very high quality, but the Freezer 7X just completely outclasses them. The 7X also takes the ease of installation crown among any aftermarket cooler I've looked at. It is legitimately the simplest process I've ever gone through. And extra bonus points on the install since, unlike a lot of other coolers, you could very readily install the 7X without removing motherboard from the case. So the all important question, should you buy the Arctic Freezer 7X and is it a worthwhile replacement for stock cooling? Up front, it's a $20 cooler, so you aren't gonna be buying this if you already have an aftermarket CPU cooler. But if you're on stock cooling, it's hard not to justify the upgrade. The performance difference both in cooling and therefore noise level of the 7X over both the Wraith Spire and the Wraith Stealth is massive. 10 degrees is a huge difference. 20 degrees isn't even in the same class. And that's not to mention Intel's awful stock cooler, which is even worse. Plus, it's a decent looking cooler, something you don't get much in the budget category. For these reasons, and its very affordable price, I would definitely recommend the Freezer 7X if you want to upgrade from a stock cooler without emptying your wallet. Click the link in the description to pick one up for yourself. Hit subscribe and click the bell icon to get notified for new videos as soon as they're up. If you like this video, hit the like button if you want to see more, hit subscribe, and I want to hear from you. Are you still running a stock cooler? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, I hope I helped and I'll see you in the next video. It's been a while since I busted out the 1200 for testing. I knew the Wraith Stealth was at the top end of safe temperatures, but I didn't realize it was that hot. And the Spire didn't perform as well as I expected either. We're all learning so much. This is fun.